Okay, I'm quiet here. It must be my turn. Good evening. Um, you never know what uh, Holy Week uh, attendance is going to be like, and uh, weather always has a great part to play in that, I guess. And so uh, we've got just the few faithful tonight. But that's okay because we're here to honor our Lord, and he said, whenever two or more are gathered in my name, there's one more than two. So, welcome. Uh, I don't have many announcements. Uh, you can see we came down to the 10 quilts that will be uh, used for the, the raffle, and we look forward to that. Um, other than that, I don't know much. We're going to be getting together again on Sunday for our Easter service, regular time, 9.30. If you'd like to join our ecumenical group, we'll be having an ecumenical Good Friday service at uh, ELC in Mount Horb at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Other than that, any, anybody else have anything they want to? We should pray for all the trees and things that are left out there tonight. I was enjoying so much. Well, first of all, I had to, I was telling uh, Clover that in order to get out of here this afternoon to go home and grab some supper, I had to put my shoulder against the door in order to get out. Oh. It was blocked, so I wouldn't let me out. I'm like, hey, let me out. <clears throat> and then uh, saw some snow on the way home, which was always fun to do, too. So, hey, welcome to Wisconsin. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, begin our worship service. Let's stand and we'll begin with our call to worship as is written on page two in your book. One last meal, one last promise. The old man who takes away the sins of the world. Bread and wine, betrayal and blessing. The old man who takes away the sins of the world. Sacrament preparing for sacrifice. Behold the man who takes away the sins of the world. We turn to page 94 in the front of our hymnals. Something that we don't do very often, but this is the um, setting one for Holy Communion. And I thought that the conf confession and forgiveness for this evening would be appropriate. We gather this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. And we sing verses 1, 3, and 5 of hymn 349.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
Jesus, knowing your time was near, you gathered your beloved. Bless us this day as we celebrate your last meal in anticipation of your impending trial, that we might be found faithful through it all. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Table is living theater, 
the communal enactment of unity amidst diversity, rooted in who God is and demonstrating where humankind and creation are to be headed. Because this is the definitive story of the church's foundational practice, it reaches both forward and backward into the story of Israel and into that of Jesus. Covenant is renewed even as it, as it is about to be broken again. Betrayal, judgment, and the breaking of Jesus' community intertwine with promise, forgiveness, and hope. Even the bread and cup are uh, multivalued symbols that convey both judgment and redemption. The unleavened bread of Passover recalls Israel's deliverance from Egyptian slavery, the bread of daily fellowship, and the abundance of this messianic day. Already demonstrated in Jesus' feeding of the crowds in the wilderness, it also anticipates the breaking of both Jesus' body and the community of his followers. Jesus' identification of the cup as his blood of covenant echoes in Exodus 24, where Israel receives the law and the promise of the land, as well as the blood that protected Israel during the plagues of Egypt. The earliest canonical reference to blood, however, is in the story of Cain's murder of Abel, where the earth swallows Abel's blood, which then cries out to God. The covenant of blood that Jesus establishes now with his disciples is the antidote to the curse of violence that the generation of Cain has carried throughout our long history of retribution. As Jesus makes covenant, even with his betrayers, he makes brothers again of those who live in the thrall of violence and death. That can need to be said. This speaks so eloquently as reasons for why we gather together on this holy evening, remembering that special night so many, many years ago. Tonight we gather for the same reason. Jesus' giving of himself offers us bread and wine, remembrances of the Passover when the angel of death went over the houses where the Israelites dwelt, and the people ate unleavened bread and drank their wine while remembering the lamb that was sacrificed in order that they might live. And then we remember the blood of the new covenant in which the new Paschal Lamb is about to sacrifice himself so that others may learn the love of God for all people. And that's the quintessential part of this evening, is this part that says, for all people. All people, not just righteous people, not just the church-going people, not just the wealthy or the poor or the white or the brown or the Hebrew, all people. Even for Judas, who was about to hand Jesus over to the temple authorities. Even for Peter's, Peter, who was about to deny him three times that evening. Even for the numerous disciples who didn't stay and watch during the crucifixion, but instead stayed safe and hiding. Even for murderers and those who had tortured him, even for the guards who hung uh, Jesus on the cross for all to see as he died this horrible, horrible death. Even for those who took him down from the cross and laid him in a borrowed tomb. Even for those who didn't anoint his body because it was, after all, the Sabbath. Even for all those sins who have betrayed the love of God and the message that Jesus has brought. Even for the tyrants who used death through the centuries to try to control the masses. Even for our parents and uncles and aunts and distant relatives who in their own way were imperfect human beings. Even for you and for me. For heaven's sake, we know we haven't been perfect angels. This meal is for all of us, both present now and in the great circle of witnesses through time and memorial, those who have gone before us and those who are yet to be born. All of us who are, were, and will be imperfect. 
all of us who know firsthand our guilt and where we have strayed from God's wish for us to love one another. This meal is for all of us. If you don't feel humbled by this experience, you haven't been listening. If you don't feel undeserving, you must be in denial. If you think this meal is for everyone but you, you might be getting the idea. But then you'd be wrong because this meal is exactly for you. And me. We are all sinners, and yet we have been invited to a table in which we are all forgiven. It used to be that you had to get permission to partake in the Lord's Supper. Only those who were righteous uh, and, and, and lived good lives and were approved by those higher authorities were allowed around the altar. How misguided we were. There are no righteous people. There are none who are worthy of this gift of life. Only because God accepts us as we are are we able to come before the Lord? I have often said, if we deny people access to bread and wine, it will not be those who are denied that have sinned. Who is worthy? No one is worthy. That's what brings us all together here. We are all in need of forgiveness and redemption, and it is only through this gift of forgiveness that our consciences can be cleared and our life can continue. Now, knowing that we are in the good company of disciple Judas, and Peter, and so many others that have gone before us, we are all invited to receive the gift that God has offered. Let us take part in this meal, feel the forgiveness that only God can offer, and call upon the name of the Lord. For in this day, all are welcome. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we confess to you that we have grievously sinned against you in many ways, not only by outward transgressions, but also by secret thoughts and desires which we cannot fully understand. We do repent of these sins, and we are heartily sorry for these offenses. We ask you in your great goodness to have mercy upon us, and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, to forgive our sins and heap your grace upon us. Amen. Let us sing hymn number 35350.
This night remembers the most famous meal ever eaten. The Last Supper. Jesus and his friends at the table. Celebrating the Passover, their ancestors' freedom from slavery in Egypt. A time of feasting and celebration throughout the Jewish world. Everyone knew the ritual foods and drink. Every part of the meal was filled with symbolism. Thank you. 
Let us stand. And let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body and world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is 296. <laughs>